What we're going to be looking at here is a mortgage notes payable. This is where you pledge title to property as security on this note or this loan that you're taking out. And for example here, Corporation A borrows $1 million here by signing a 20-year mortgage note with a stated interest rate of 10.75% to finance a new plant here. The lender bank demands four points here to close the financing on this note here and a point here is 1% of the face value of the note. Also required here are monthly interest payments on this note here. Now to note here, uh, lenders have particularly replaced the traditional fixed rate mortgage here with alternative variable rate mortgages also called floating rate or adjustable rate mortgages and they adjust the rates in increments here of one and three year increments based on the prime uh, interest rate here or it could be US Treasury notes or bonds here. And now let's go look at how we'd handle this uh, mortgage notes payable here to record it and we have to calculate interest on it and we have to determine uh, how much money uh, the corporation here is borrowing and how they're going to pay it back here. So for example here Corporation A will receive 4% here less than the $1 million that they're borrowing. And uh, what why they're going to get the 4% less here is that the bank is charging and this is the key here four points here so what well, a point represents one percent here of the loan that they're taking out so four points here times one percent is going to give us a four percent here uh, reduction to the amount of money that we're going to receive here because that's going to be the initial financing cost here on this note. So what we do here to calculate the um, cash received, let's just go through it here. You get the face value of the mortgage you know it's payable, that's $1 million. That's what uh, Corporation A here is going to have to pay back. But we have to subtract out the closing costs here on this note or this loan here. And that, remember, was four points or 4% 4 of the loan here uh, times $1 million and that equals $40,000 here. So the cash that Corporation A is going to receive here based on those four points of closing uh, costs required was simply the difference between the one million dollars that they're going to have to pay back less this forty thousand in closing costs gives us the cash received of nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So now what we have to do is we have to take our nine hundred and sixty thousand dollar amount of cash we received here and we have to amortize it up to the one million dollars that the uh, corporation A is going to have to pay back here and we have to amortize that over a uh, or 20 years here uh, and we're looking at we're going to have to our payments are going to have to be made on a monthly basis so we're going to have 20 years here to have 12 months per year or we're going to have 240 months on this uh, mortgage notes payable that we're going to have to pay here on a, and our payments are going to be on a monthly basis here for the interest costs. So let's go down and we're going to be using this effective interest method here for amortizing this note. So first off, let's we have to we, we know what our payment amount and that's going to be that fixed rate here. So what we would do is we take a, the stated rate of interest. We know with that's stated on the note here, a 10.75% and it's a $1 million loan or note here. Uh, take that times the uh, in, a stated rate of interest here, 10.75%, divide it by uh, 12 months. Uh, per year here so we're going to get the monthly uh, fixed rate of interest that they're going to have to pay here uh, based on that stated rate of interest of $8,958. But what we have to come up with here for this amortization here using this effective interest method we have to come up with the effective interest rate on this note here because the stated rate is 10.75 here but we're going to find out that the effective rate is going to have to be a little bit higher here because they received this note for less than the face value here. It's sort of like a discount on a bond here but this is what we have to amortize up. So let's go and look at how we would calculate the effective yield or interest rate here on this note here. And I'm just going to be using the Excel function here. But what you'd have to do is have to either use uh, the Excel function here or use your financial calculator to make this calculation. So using the Excel function here, I'm just using the yield function here. Uh, we've settled, let's just say we settled this note. I had to put some numbers in here. Um, and we have we have a settlement date that we have to put in here. And then we have to put a maturity date here that we put in. And I actually have a 20 years here between the settlement date here and when the note was issued here and when it matures here. And then we have to put in an interest rate. Uh, again, I'm just using the, the stated rate of interest here, 10.75%. And then we have to put in our purchase price 
and our redemption here. Now when you're dealing with this, these financial calculations here, you actually have to put in a ratio here. So uh, in this case, it was pretty simple because we got the $960,000 we're receiving here and we're going to have to pay back $1 million. So the ratio here is 96. So purchase price we just put in at 96, redemption here at 100 here. So, And then the frequency here, I'm just putting in uh, the 10.75% represents the interest rate per year. So we put in the frequency here at the um, of, of 1 here for the year here. Plug it into our, make our calculations here. And we're going at the end of the period here, that's when we're making our calculations at. We're going to come up with an effective uh, interest rate here of 11.2609%. And that's the yearly interest rate here. But what we have to do is we have to determine the monthly interest rate. So we just take the 11. 2609% here divided by 12 months. So our monthly rate here is going to be 9.3. Uh, 84%. So now we've got our effective interest rate here on a monthly basis. So simply going up to our amortization schedule here, uh, our effective interest rate here, what they're actually paying here to uh, on this note here would be again a 9.384% here times our beginning balance here $960,000 here gives us the effective monthly interest rate here of $9,000. In nine dollars. So to determine our uh, amortize our amount here, um, we just take the uh, cash payment that we made here of eighty eight thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars per month, and the different and looking at the effective amount of interest that we're paying here of nine thousand nine dollars. The difference here between those two is going to give us fifty one dollars. So this is what we use to amortize this long term note here, this mortgage note here. So just add that to your beginning balance here, and it, it's a very small small amount here of $960,051. But you have to go through all 240 payments here and you have to amortize this note up to $1 million here because that's what its maturity value is and what it's payable here. So all I'm showing is four periods here, but you'd have to amortize it up in this fashion here for 240 months here. And again, I'm just using this fixed rate here. If there's some adjustments that have to be made either one or three years down the road, when we talk about these variable mortgage rates, then you'd have to adjust your amortization as well here. Okay, so we've taken care of uh, calculating uh, our effective interest here on a monthly basis and also our fixed interest here on a monthly basis and then we would have amortized it up here again from the 960,000 that is the amount that money that uh, corporation received here and we have to amortize it up to one million dollars here that's the amount that they're gonna have to pay back okay let's go look at how we would record this here so all right so Recording the issue here of this mortgage notes payable with these four points for the closing cost. That's that 4% of our closing costs. So what we have to do is we have to set up here on our balance sheet here as a liability, a notes payable here. That's in it. We label it here as a mortgage secured here notes payable. That's for that mortgage notes payable here. And let's just say uh, the, that note was taken out here on January 1st at 20X1. So we'd credit our notes payable here for... Um, one million dollars here on that date here and then we have to come up with uh, a balancing entries here so because we received and let's go look at it here so the cash on our mortgage notes payable again on our balance sheet here is the asset account here uh, that we would debit for nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars here again on one one twenty x one that was the uh, cash that we actually received here. So we've got a balancing amount here because we only received $960,000 or and we're going to have to pay back a million dollars here. We have to set up this discount here to this mortgage notes payable. That's our counter account to our uh, uh, notes payable here. So we debit that here for $40,000 again on 1120X1. So we've got the credit amount here of a million dollars on our notes payable. Our contra account here, we had have a debit here for 40,000 and then our other uh, debit amount would go to our cash account here for $960,000. So what I'm just showing here is how we would, we we're gonna be amortizing this note here. And just make a point of here, our cash account here is an asset, our notes payable, this is where we're showing our liabilities. And then we're gonna have our interest expense here. That's gonna be 
be on our income statement. All right, so let's uh, just look at amortizing it. And I, we're going to take this right off our effective interest amortization schedule here, again, on a monthly basis here. So let's just look at what we're going to, two things that we're going to have to do here. So our discount to notes payable, it would be reduced by those, um, that amortization that we calculated each month here, $51 here and up to uh, each each one of the months here, 51, 51, and then 52 and 52, the first four months here, again, on a monthly basis. So we credit our discount to notes payable here, reduce it by that amount, and then we would recognize it as interest expense for that amortize, amortizing that loan here, again, on a Nord Nord mortgage notes payable on our income statement. So we would debit it for the amount here of the reduction of our discount on our notes payable. So that's part of our interest expense here because that we receive less money than we're, we're going to have to pay out here. So again, we have to go through this for a total of 240 months here. And then uh, the other interest expense we have, that is our cash payment that we have to make here on that note here and that's that fixed rate here of of 10.75 percent per year here and when we look at it on a monthly basis here you remember that was calculated out to eight thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars here so our cash we'd reduce that on that, mo uh, that monthly payment here by eight thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars each month here and then the debit amount here would go toward an interest expense here for this note, mortgage notes payable on our income statement here of $8,958 each month. Again, that's on a monthly basis. So we'd have to uh, recognize this interest expense here at that fixed rate for those total of 240 months for the life of that mortgage note here. So you can see here, just to make a point here, our interest expense, it was for that cash payment that we have here that we have to make uh, on that note here based on the uh, fixed rate here of 10.75%. And then we also recognize the interest expense here uh, based on the amortization of that note here. So we could have lumped this interest expense together, both of them be, uh, together here, our cash payment plus our amortization amount, but I broke them out here so you can see the difference here. So uh, just to summarize here, when you're dealing with these uh, mortgage notes payable here, you're gonna have to set up some, uh, you're gonna have to, in, in this case, because there's closing costs involved. You have to determine what your closing costs are involved. And whatever that their closing cost is, that reduces the amount of money you're getting. So you have to set up, in this case, a discount here, this mortgage notes payable here. And that's our contra account to our notes payable. And then you would just set up your cash account based on the amount of cash you received here. And then um, you'd have to read your cash, you'd have to recognize those fixed uh, interest payments that you have, in this case, on a monthly basis. And then you remember, you also have to amortize this discount here in your notes payable. That has to be allocated again on a, on a monthly basis here. Okay, so that takes care of our mortgage notes payable and how you'd be uh, calculating your interest expense on it and how you'd be recording it here on your balance sheet here and on your income statement.